Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to do programming in BASIC 256. If you want to download BASIC 256 into your laptop or your PC, you can see my previous video. So you can freely download BASIC 256 in your systems. So BASIC 256 is a programming language for beginners. It stands for Beginners All Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. So when you open BASIC 256, you will get this window. So this window has various parts. This is called as code window where we write our actual program. This is your text output area. That means whatever program you write here, you have to click on the run button here. And when you click on the run button, the output will be shown in the text output area. This is the graphic output area. So if you want to do some graphic programming in basic 256, for that the output will come in graphics output area. It will not come in text output area. And how to write graphics for that you can see my next video. So some commonly used commands in basic 256. One is CLS which stands for clear loaded screen. It is used to clear the text output area of basic 256 before showing the result of the program. So before writing a program, you can start the program with CLS command so that it will delete everything which is already there on the text output area. Next is REM. REM statement is used to write any remarks or comments about the program. Whatever is written after REM will be ignored by the computer when the program is running. End statement is used to indicate the end of the program. The statement written after end will not be executed. So basically in the end of the program, we write the end statement. So this is how these three commands will be helpful to us when we are using basic 256. Print statement. So if you have to print some message or the result of the program, we use print statement. And the message to be written should be enclosed in double quotation mark. For example, if you want to print a message, hello students, so we have to write print. Then in the message, we have to write in double quotation mark as you can see here. Print statement can also be used to do calculations. For example, if I write print 45 plus 10, it will display the result 55 in the text output area. So now we will see how to use print statement in basic to 56. So we will switch over to basic 256 now. This is the basic 256 window. Now here I will write some commands like print, double quotes open, hello students, double quotes close, print, let's learn basic 256. So two print command we have written here. And now if I click on run button, it, it will show me the output here. If there is any error in the program, like suppose if I forget to close the quotation mark and then I run, it will show me the error. So it will clearly show you compile error on line number two syntax error around character seven. So this is these are the line numbers which come automatically when we write a program in basic 256. So it is showing me the error is there on line number two and around character seven. So here if I put quotation mark and click on the run button, it will show you the output. So now we will learn how to use variables. Variables are used to store data. So they are user defined name which can be used to store some data. Variables can be numeric or alphanumeric variables. Alphanumeric variables are also called as string variables. They are more or less same in all the programming languages. So if we have to store some data, we use some variables for them. So numeric variables means they are used to store a number. For example, if I write a equal to 40. So here a is a variable which will have a value 40. Similarly, there are string variables which are used to store alphanumeric values. Alphanumeric values means the values which are text values which can contain alphabets and numbers both. Whatever values we are writing for string variables, it should be enclosed in double quotes. Name of the string variable must end with dollar sign. For example, if I write a dollar, rr dollar, name dollar, so these are all string variable. If I write a, that means it's a numeric variable. So after the variable name, we have to write dollar sign in string variables. So if I write name dollar equal to James. So here the variable name is name dollar sign because it's a string variable. James should be enclosed in double quotes. Since it's a string variable, the values should be enclosed in double quotes. Now there are certain rules for naming a variable. A variable name can have maximum of 40 characters. A variable name must begin with a letter. So that means we can't have a variable whose name is 1H. That will be wrong. It can be A1, but it cannot start with a number. 
Variable names can have alphabets, numbers, and decimals. It cannot be any reserved word like basic commands, print, CLSS, etc. So there are certain commands which have predefined meaning. So we can't take a variable whose name is print or CLS or rem. Variable names are case sensitive. If I write mark, suppose in small letters, so everywhere in the program I have to use marks in small letters only. Otherwise, it will take the marks if I have written in capital letters and in small letters, both of these will be taken as separate variable names. In basic 256, now we will write a program to find sum of two numbers. So we will write, suppose, a equal to 10, b equal to 20, sum equal to a plus b, print sum. So I have taken two variables a and b, which are storing some values. Then after that, I have taken a variable sum, sum equal to a plus b, print sum. It will print the value of sum here. Now, if you click on run button, it will show you the answer 30. So now you have seen, we generally write the statements in print in double quotes. But here we have not written sum in double quotes. If I write sum in double quotes, it will print sum, S-U-M. But we have to print the value which is stored in the variable sum. So if we have to print the value, we have to write the variable name outside the quotation mark. If I have to write a proper message like sum is this, so we will write sum is whatever message you want to display. Then we will write a plus sign. Then we will write the variable name after the quotation mark. Press F5 and it will show the result sum is 30. Same way, if I want to multiply these two numbers also, suppose my program has to subtract, divide, multiply, all these four operations we want to perform. So suppose I'm taking uh, multiply product equal to A into B. Then suppose uh, I'm printing product is, then plus sign, then the variable name, okay? Then division, suppose I'm taking div as a variable A slash B, then print division is, plus sign div. Now suppose if I am taking another variable for subtraction, so I am taking subs equal to a minus b, then print, quotation mark open, subtraction is plus subs. So uh, when we are writing a print statement, we have to first write the message in quotation mark, after that plus sign, after that, whatever variable value we want to print, we have to write it. So for the variables, we will use, we will not write the variable name inside the quotation mark because we have to print the value of the variable and not the message as such. So when we run the program, it will show us all the answers. Sum is 30, product is 200, division is 0.5, subtraction is minus 10. So this is how we can write a program using simple variables, using print statement, we can do simple calculations. Now, this is one of the programs. Now suppose, let us use another program here. Um, we will see the use of CLS statement now. Why do we use CLS command in basic 256? So suppose if I write print, hello students. And now if I run this particular statement, click on the run button here. So it is showing hello students. We can also write CLS so that it can clear the screen before writing the program output. Now in this case, we will write a program to enter item name, price, and quantity find total cost. So we have to write a program to enter item name, price, and quantity find total cost. So we will take variables now. In this case, we will take string variable also because name. Name contains text. So suppose I am taking n for name. So I will write n dollar equal to. I will take any item name like I am taking pen as the item name. P for price I am taking. Suppose the price of the pen is 50 rupees. Q for quantity I am taking. Suppose the quantity is 20. Okay. Now I have to find total. I will write total equal to P into Q. And then we will print the result. Print. Total cost is plus sign. After print, we have to write, after the quotation mark, we have to write the plus sign plus total. 
Now run the program. It is showing total is 1000. That is 50 into 20. Total is 1000. So this is how we will write a program using string variable also. Now we will write one more program here to find area and perimeter of rectangle. Program to find area and perimeter of rectangle. So, what is the area of rectangle? L into B, length into breadth, perimeter of rectangle, 2 into L plus B. So, now we will take two variables, one, one for length, L equal to suppose uh, 50, B equal to breadth, breadth is suppose uh, 40, then we will take area equal to L into B. We can write the commands in small letters or in capital letter, doesn't matter. If I write print in small, print in capital, hardly matters. So now print area is plus area. Now we will write perimeter. I am taking the variable PER 2 into. Now we know the board mass rule. So we have to write L plus B in round brackets. Okay. Now we will print the perimeter also. Now we will print the answer here. It is showing area is 2000, perimeter is 180. So it's better if we print the values of length and breadth also before printing our result. So we can write print length of rectangle is plus L print breadth is plus B. Now we will run this program. It is showing length is 50, breadth is 40, area is 2000, perimeter is 180. So this is how we will write a program and rem command is used to write some uh, comment, write some remark about the program. We generally write the question. We can write the aim of the program here in rem. So this is how we have used area of a perimeter, area and perimeter of a rectangle. Now we will write a program which will use more of string variables. Suppose we want to write a program to enter. Uh, name, class, roll number, and school name. So, for that, now we have to see how to use string variable here. Now, if I want to take name, so name is a string value. It contains text. It contains non-numeric value. I am taking n dollar equal to take any name. Okay. So it should be enclosed in double quotes. Then we are taking class. Class, if you want to take suppose 7, then it's okay. But if you want to take 7a, you want to write section also, then we have to write it in double quotes because that then it will be a alphanumeric value. Now there is we have to write class dollar. Otherwise, it will not work. We have to write dollar sign after the class. Roll number is a number. So we can write roll number equal to 5. Then we have to write school. School again is a text value. It's a string value, school dollar equal to any school name we can write. Now we will print all these details. Or we can print more. So hello and then end dollar. Your details are. Roll number plus roll. Then again plus, we, if you want to combine two or more variable names, we can use plus sign here. Plus class is again plus plus school is plus school and dollar sign. Now we will run the program. So basically, uh, we can print the message, we can customize it, we can print multiple details in a single print statement as you can see here. So here we have used, um, we can also press F5 to run the program. So we have used n dollar for name. Since it's a string variable, we have to enclose it in double quotes. So name, class and school name, they are all string variables. We have to write dollar sign after them. Then we can use print statement, print hello and the school and your name. 
so hello joy your details are rule number 5 class is 7a school is abc school if you want to give some space also that also we can give the space here so that it can space out before printing the values so i am running the program again we can press f5 to run so now it is nicely spaced out so this is how you can write simple commands in basic 256 using variables and using print statement now next we will learn how to use input statement because in these programs we have input the values when we were writing the program now what we want is we want that when we run the program by pressing f5 or by clicking on this run button we it should ask us to enter the values so that we can change the values here so now we will see how to write a program using input 